what was the they, issue? They do then? like numbers. Right, we know that. What was the? They do. They really. They they are obsessed with that stuff. What was the issue on November eleventh, twenty eleven? I can I can see two things. The first is Obama had made his definitive speech, saying we are exiting Iraq. End game. Finished. Over. No more. Out. That had been that speech had been made on the twenty first of October. 2011. So three weeks before the seven bullets. Okay, got it. That's the kind of thing that gets those guys going, right?、Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that had just happened was in October. Also, Gaddafi of Libya had been killed, and what was beginning to happen? And you can see this. I, I went and found some clippings. It was known. We knew it. I knew it. It was happening in October, November of 2011. Was the airlift was beginning. An airlift and a sea lift to take the jihadis, the crazies that had just destroyed Libya, ship them、oh, to Turkey, moving to them Turkey, up, into position to go into, into Syria. Syria. Yeah, into、sure. Syria, and this this operation,、mm -hmm. Benghazi, the Benghazi business is rooted in that. That is what Ambassador Stevens, I'm afraid, was doing. That is why his last meeting on Earth was with the Turkish. Consul in Benghazi, Libya. Otherwise, what sense does that does that really make?、Right. So here we, we have, have to take our big, last two big, big war issues, two big war issues hanging、uh -huh. in the balance. Yeah, and the the rogue network speaks up, and they、okay. say, "Guess what? We're here, and we want war. And you better not deescalate. You better escalate, or we can get you any time of day, any way we want." Well, that's what、uh, we have to take a break, but. Eleven, eleven, eleven. In case you folks don't know it, and and you say、uh, correctly, this story has just come back in the media, but it was gone. A man was able to park his car on a street near the White House and fired off seven rounds from a semi-automatic rifle, and、uh, hit the White House. He and he got away. He just drove away. So it's a it's a very interesting situation that Webster is constructing for us. And may I just、us. add one other facet?、Go. Or do we have to wait?、Uh, let's wait. Let's get it done. We'll come right、okay. back. Okay. Very interesting.、It's、Congressman Lamborn. Lamborn. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Okay. And、uh, that White House shooting in 2011 is very interesting. I'm very happy that this woman has brought this material forward just very quickly here. President Obama and his wife、uh, were out of town on that evening, by the way, November 11th, 2011. But their younger daughter, Sasha, and、uh, Michelle Obama's mother were inside. Older daughter、uh, Malia was expected back at any moment. Secret Service officers initially rushed to respond. One stationed directly under the second floor terrace where the bullet struck drew her .357 and prepared to crack open an emergency gun box. Snipers on the roof, standing just 20 feet from where one of the bullets struck, scanned the south lawn through their rifle scopes for signs of an attack. With little camera surveillance. On the White House perimeter, it was up to the Secret Service officers on duty to figure out what was going on. Then came an order that surprised some of them, at least. The order: "Quote: No shots have been fired. Stand down." That from a supervisor. He、right. said it was a backfire from a nearby construction vehicle. All right, go ahead. No, I say if you interrogate that guy, that supervisor, who said. Nothing,、Stand、nothing、down. to see here.、Yeah. Stand down. Keep moving. No gunshots. You pull on that, you will get、yeah. to the rogue network. Agreed. You'll get to see what what, what? invisible government looks Wonder like. Wonder if he's still alive.、It's、a little bit like you know. Remember the guy who was commanding the Northeast Air Defense sector,、oh, yeah. and he said,、uh -huh. "I can't have my planes take off because then they'd all run out of gas at the same time." Unbelievable. I mean, th this is one of those cases. Yeah. And remember, the issue then. November eleventh, twenty eleven, is: Are you going to end the Iraq War? And Obama's saying yes. And are you going to start the Syrian War? And I don't know what Obama was saying, but it it may just be a reinforcer saying, you know, you haven't interfered with us yet, but you know, don't even dream of doing it. Right. So yeah. And you can you can go back. And for example, a year ago, right? That would that this poor lady who, who was、uh, was killed, right? Shot with her. Baby daughter sitting in the back seat,、right. um, obviously deranged, right, unarmed, right, forgotten now.、Um, 
uh, Miriam, Miriam Carey. Uh, Carey. So th- that issue was, of course, uh, that was about the time when the city of uh, Kusair, the rebel stronghold of Kusair, Syria, had fallen. And, and the, the rebels were beginning to lose. And the question was, would the U.S. or somebody, you know, try to bail them out? Uh, so that, in a sense, was the prelude. Uh, or no, it, it, it actually, it was, a, it was coming right after the non-bombing of Syria, right? Right after the, the fake Ghouta chemical weapons case, right? So this was sort of a, a post hoc expression of unhappiness from the, from the rogue network, right? And the fact that the woman is black and she gets massacred unlike these other guys who, you know, do the shooting or oh, yeah. run up the lawn, yeah. they get they get different treatment. There's something about being black, right? It's not unusual, but maybe in this case that would that would have impressed Obama particularly, right? That there was a you know there was a very definite double standard. So anyway, you get the idea. Now, this also comes in the um, the framework of an attempt to incite insubordination and mutiny in the armed forces. And I'm glad some of this got on to uh, MSNBC, I think, last night. And this is a congressman from Colorado by the name of Lamborn. And and Congressman Lamborn, right-wing Republican, uh, had given a speech to a a group of 40 or 50 right-wing extremists in Colorado. And he said to them, some of us some of us, right? So an organized force, and I guess it means the House Republican Caucus or parts of it, right? Maybe it's the House Republican Study Group. I don't know if he's a member. But some part of the House Republicans are approaching generals and admirals and other officers and saying, do you agree with Obama's no boots on the ground, right? Do you, are you demanding boots on the ground, right? Do you want a wider war? Are you demanding escalation and Obama's not giving it to you? Well, if any of that applies to you, you should resign. We should have mass resignations from the armed forces, and they should make statements. Right? They should, as the guy said, go out in a blaze of glory. Now, that could also be interpreted in a number of ways. But um, basically, uh, at least on the, the surface meaning, is you've got to resign from the armed forces. So he, First of all, this is obviously quite significant, right? From the Republican point of view, the United States is at war, right? We have the war on terror. And in the middle of the war on terror, the Republicans say, we want to promote mass resignations and a de facto mutiny to cripple the U.S. armed forces in the midst of a war against terrorists, right? Mm-hmm. That's how they would see it. And there, there is something to that vision. I mean, there is something like that going on, but not the way mm-hmm. they would see it. Mm-hmm. So uh, what are we to do with an opposition party that thinks that they can get away with um, fomenting mutiny, desertion, maybe insubordination? They're trying to destroy the morale of the armed forces for party, partisan gain? This is quite extreme. Um, now, I think the guy has claimed that you know he was taken out of context, but he wasn't. He was precisely doing this. I'll give you another interesting example. William Crystal. Um, the, the, uh, on, on one of the Sunday shows this past week. Mm-hmm. You have to remember, uh, on Sunday evening, Obama appeared on uh, 60 Minutes on CBS, and he said, the U.S. intelligence community underestimated the danger of ISIS. And they yes. all start screaming, right? All the CIA yeah. clowns, yeah. all the DIA clowns, all the State Department clowns. They say, how dare you? How dare you? We yeah. told you everything. You're a bundler, not us. <laughs> well, I'm afraid, no, I think he's quite right. I, they, it, 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 this is an understatement because it's not that they understated it, it's that they created it. Without the CIA, there's no ISIS. No question. Let's, let's get serious. There wouldn't, there wouldn't be the Syrian rebels. How did the Syrian rebels get across the Mediterranean from Libya to Turkey and then into Syria with the CIA uh, you know, uh, uh, passport or whatever they had? So um, this is this is a, it's really an, an outrageous um, situation. Um, but uh, so William Crystal gets on, on CBS, 
and they and they say, well, what do you think? And he said, oh, this outrageous. It's funny because the, remember the traditional neocon stance is that the CIA is worthless, right? Mm-hmm. That was what you know Wolfowitz and Cheney and all these people thought. But now the CIA is untouchable for them, and uh, they're they're putting this on uh, with with William Crystal, and he actually says then. He says to the CIA, he says, let me, let me say something to the CIA people listening in. He says, dear CIA, or, you know, people in the CIA should know that if you don't like what Obama is saying about you, you can leak. And then he gives the phone number of his magazine, the Weekly Standard, 202 blah, 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 right, whatever the phone number is. And he says, you should call me and you should leak. <laughs> these people remember they were so freaked out that there had been leaks you know from the from the obama white house right that obama was leaking when he wanted yeah. to yeah yeah and now he gets on he gets on national television and says you should you should call and essentially give me secret information to which i have no clearance or right so this is a, it's an atmosphere of putsch uh, and let me just quickly sketch, just sum up the, the whole thing. What's the push, push faction? Well, uh, no, think of seven days in May, right? Think of you know, seven days in May. You have different kinds of military officers. You have a couple of senators. You have these kinds of things. You, so you really do today? smell this in the wind, huh? Interesting. Uh, this is this has been around. I mean, yeah. you know, they're getting closer and closer. And um, you know, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't rule out anything. And I would also have to say the political culture of the United States. Uh-huh. is one of the most imbecilic in the oh, world. More, because you absolutely. see these people, they go on at length, oh, the culture of the Secret Service is no good. Oh, they're sloppy. They're demoralized. My God, there's a private rogue network in there that promotes, certainly they promote an atmosphere of chaos and incompetence because that's a great camouflage. But there's a rogue network that wants to be able to issue these threats and, if necessary, to carry them out. Now, Again, who? Well, we've heard McCain arrest John, uh, arrest McCain for ISIS, ISIS. with a hashtag mm-hmm. in front. Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham was on TV the other week, and he said, "If Obama doesn't get this right, ISIS is going to come over here and kill ev- kill every one of us. <laughs> They're going to exterminate the entire population." Oh, of the I remember States that quote. With, mm-hmm. with, with 25,000 crazies, right? 25,000 yeah. psychotic patsies, because it, it turns out a lot of them are schizophrenic. Then there's a second rank. I would say John Forbes Kerry, Skull and Bones, mm-hmm. Secretary of State, mm-hmm. Samantha Power, Kerry, the Skull and Bones faction, Samantha, of course, the humanitarian bomber faction. Now, if we go back to April in the Wall Street Journal, we'll find that they had already brought in General David Petraeus and General Jack Keane, four-star generals both, to help start the war in Syria the way it really needed to be started. Right? This, was, this was April of this year. So they brought in Petraeus and Keene, and of course Petraeus is the key to all neocons. Right? He's the, the, the great hope of the neocons, is that right. he would come in as a man on horseback one way or yeah. the other. And... General Jack Keane, now he, this is important too, because he works for the Institute for the Study of War, which is run by <laughs> Kim Kagan. And Kim Kagan and, and, uh, and, and, and these people, that's the Kagan clan. So that yes. was Donald Kagan of the Brookings Institution, was the yeah. number one foreign policy guy for Romney. And then we also have uh, this other Kagan, Frederick Kagan, designed the surge for Petraeus and Crocker back in 2007, and he's now at the American Enterprise Institute. So if you look at it, I think that's a pretty good estimate of who's involved in fomenting this, uh, this, uh, you know, fragmenting of the U.S. Armed Forces. That's a very uh, interesting observation. Very, very well thought out. uh, have a a wider war and and escalation everywhere. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Mm -hmm. I would say, the slogan for this next month, hashtag arrest McCain for yeah. ISIS. Well, I, I, that, think, I think it's a very complicated analysis, but that subsumes it. No, you did a great job in that hour. Terrific. Uh, you put your finger on the undercurrents that are there. 
clearly, and I agree with you, and I've said it for many years, uh, everything's on the table, and I wouldn't rule anything out.